At the moment, uh, I've got a big long list like this, and I'm gonna start using formulas. I wanna save myself a bit of time, so I'm just gonna turn this into an Excel table. And you could do insert and table on the menu, or control T, shortcut key. Make sure you've got my table as headers tick, assuming you have, and hit OK. Uh, I don't like that table design, um, so I'm just gonna change it to that one and make that the default for now. So, let's, we've got our table, we need to start extracting data. So first off, we wanna start recognizing the patterns, yeah? So we know that the first name is after a comma, the last name's on the left. We know that um, the email address starts with this triangular bracket. So I think I'll just break this formula up a bit and sort of go, right, okay, let's, let's find some flags and some things in common in the patterns and detect where they are. So I'm gonna detect where the comma is on every row because that's a key piece of information and also where that triangle is and from that i'm going to be able to pull out the name so let's go ahead so if i put um the comma position as a column title there and we're going to find the column so i'm going to use the find function so the text based function it allows you to find any text within another text and return a number so what do we want to find we need to put it in quotes i want to find a comma we want to find it in the email address. We hit enter, beauty of a table is straight down, don't need to, you know, don't need to copy and paste that formula down or anything. We know it's consistent, we know it's reliable, can't be a mistake. So this tells us um, it's in position 11. So this one, for example, it's nice and short, but let's pick that one. We know it's five letters, comma is position number six. So quick sort of spot check really that we're looking at the right kind of thing. So that's the first one. The next one then, we might as well use the uh, something like this, because we know that we've only got four characters. So we can sort of, we know what result we're looking for for the triangle. So let's try and find the triangle. Exactly the same kind of formula. Find that within that text. And the great, another great thing about table, it doesn't matter where you enter that. It's gonna, you know, fit it all the way down and back up. Um, gives it a ridiculous column name, but let's just change that. And so did we get something sensible? Well, if the comma's at position nine, and we know it is, then it looks like probably something like 16 is about right. We've got space, then the four characters of Lura, then another space, so that's kind of six. And then, you know, that one will be the seventh, so nine plus seven, yeah, 16. Great. Okay, so we got our key sort of position markers um, flagged up now. And, you know, if we wanted to extract other pieces of text, we could use similar things to find like the at symbol or, or anything else that's in, you know, we've got in common, like dots or stuff. And what we're going to do with that, right, so first off, let's, let's get the last name. That's a nice and simple one. So last name, right. And that is everything to the left of the comma. So we know where the comma is. So we're just going to pick up Use the function left, which turns everything to the left. So what text do we want? So it's this text here. And I'm using the arrow keys, by the way, to select that. How many characters do we want? Well, we want the first 11. Well, we don't actually want 11 because 11 is the comma. If I put that on, for example, it's just, uh, you'll see it picks up the comma as well. We don't want the comma. So F2 to go back in, let's take one off of that position number so that we sort of remove that comma. Okay, so we've got our last name now. Now we want the first name. So where is the first name? So it's not at the left, so we can't use the, the left. And it probably won't surprise you to find that out that there's a text function called right, which would take everything to the right. We can't use that, um, but it's in the middle. So have we got one more called middle? Well, it's not called middle, but it is called mid. So it's fairly simple to remember. Mid, and this is a very flexible function. This is one of my 33 fantastic Excel functions. And if you wanna get your hands on the cheat sheet for that, plus a library of all the Excel functions, there's a um, link in the description. So make sure you have a, go and have a look at that completely free. But mid, as you can see, you say what text you wanna go on. So you say that text, and then you say where you want to start and where you wanna finish. So you can pick any position within the text. So where are we going to start? We're trying to find the first name. Well, we know that, sorry, so we want to pick up that text. The start number, what well, if we start there at the comma and then we add two, 
because we've got the comma itself and then the space. We're going to start at the beginning of the first name, which is great, right? And then it says number of characters. Now, we well, we know the position where the email address starts. It's that one. So we know that that minus the first one is going to give us those two sort of positions is going to give us everything between the comma and the um, arrow, but it will also include those um, positions. So we just need to take something off of that. So we need to take three off of that. So it's the comma and the two spaces. So we'll do that. And that, in theory, should give us what we need. And it has. If you add new email addresses in, it's going to pick them up instantly. And you can pass this spreadsheet on to somebody else, and it's just going to work. I'm just going to go for full name, just so that you can complete the exercise. We can see how we can combine these. Now you could use functions to do this, sort of concatenate and text join might be two that you might want to look into if you're trying to combine a lot of information together. But just two things like this. I'm just going to combine them using the ampersand and a space in between. So I just say I want the first name and a space and the last name there and hit enter. And again, we've got a table, so it's just all going to fill straight down. And just as an example there, this we can be sure has worked. And I'm just going to put a whole load of new email addresses on the bottom here. And, it, and if I paste those down on the bottom there, you can see these formulas pick them straight up and we've got everything else. So there you go. Using functions to establish, to extract data from within text, um, ideal if you need it to be repeatable or pass it on to somebody else. What if when you extracted your data, you, you just got the, literally the email addresses? But, you know, everyone here works for up for itself. You don't really, by the way, it's, all these addresses are made up by incidentally. So don't try and email any of these people. They don't exist. But we've got a consistent format there. We can see that we've got a first name, a dot and a second name at upforexcel.com. So we want to turn that into a list of names. So again, I'm going to be using functions to do this. So I'm going to turn it into a table, control T again, get that as a table. I already made that format my default, so it's going to look nice from the start. Again, something similar. I'm going to want to know where the dot position is. So let's make a column called uh, dot position. And I'm going to need to know where the at position is. So let's do that. It doesn't like that in tables because it's a notation in tables. So I just put space in front just to get that as a column header. So dot position, exactly the same thing. We're going to find dot within that text. We don't, incidentally, anything in square brackets on this prompt here. We don't need to, it's an optional argument. Um, we don't need to use it. So hit and enter, we get our dot position. I'm going to copy and paste that exact same formula for ease of use, or speed, and just change that to an at symbol. Now we have our at position. So exactly the same as before, really. We're now going to be able to extract the first name and last name. So first name, again, we're going to use the left function to extract those positions from the left, minus one, of course, because don't include the dot. So there we go. Now, it's, a, it's not very nice. We want to capitalize the first letter of that. And so there's a few functions we can use in Excel um, that, that deal with capitalization. So the, the first one is upper, and that would give us the uppercase. So we get uppercase names there, for example. But lower would give us lowercase. But actually, if we want to capitalize the first letter, there's a function called proper, which is the proper case. And that's ideal because for a name, that's exactly what we want. It's for proper nouns, we've got a name, capitalizes the first letter. So we've just embedded that whole function in there. And of course, we could do exactly the same thing the, um, with the final name. So again, we'll use the mid function there on that text. And it's, you know, we're going to, let's just start there for, for the moment and, and take the difference between the two as the, the length. This is going to give us something a little bit odd looking, of course. 
but we can see kind of how it's uh, how it's odd. So if we add one to the start position, we then get that at symbol, we'll take one off. So rather than kind of work it out this time as I did before, I've just sort of played about, bit of trial and error really, but that's again the beauty of having a table with all your formulas automatically changing, because you can just change it in one place, everything's, everything's changing. And then again, we've got our function now, embed the entire thing in a proper, so that was tab to do that, and hit end, to go to the end, close the brackets, and hit enter, and there we go, we've got first name, last name, and we could combine that of course in exactly the same way as before, so I won't go through that again. So that tells you, you know, so that's how you can create a list of names from email addresses. Remember, if you want to get your hands on my 33 fantastic functions for Excel cheat sheet, then there's a link in the description. We basically list all of the functions, their category, what they do, typical use cases that I use these functions for, functions that you can learn that are in the same family, how useful I think they are and how complex I think they are. But as a bonus, you also get every single Excel function listed in here. You can sort it, filter it. You've got Microsoft's own description of that function. And I've got on here whether I think um, it's useful, essential or optional. And big hint, there's 500 plus functions on here, I think. 33 are either essential, important, or useful. The rest, 95% odd, optional. So click the link in the description if you want to get your hands on this. Um, hopefully you'll find it really, really useful. It'll save you loads of time because you know with these 33 functions, you can do pretty much anything you ever would want to do in Excel. And it's just going to save you a whole load of learning time and you can get really efficient, really quick at just a few of the functions. That's it for this video, but there's so much more on the Up for Excel YouTube channel to get you better Excel results faster. So go and have a look, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and tell me in the comments what you wanna see me talking about. I wanna focus on saving time in Excel, getting you better results faster. So tell me what you want, I'll listen to it, I'll give you some great ideas for new videos in the future. See you soon.